Hey guys, this is Abhishek from GadgetSuits.com and today we are here at the event uh, of Vivo and we have the Vivo X5 Max with us. This is the slimmest phone out there in the market which is going to be available in India for a price of approximately 32,000 rupees and slightly above that in terms of the price. In terms of design, this phone looks pretty good. It is a kind of a very slim phone which you can imagine and again, even with this much of slimness, this phone is not compromised in terms of the build quality. They have used metal on the back and on the edges as well they have used metal and over here they have used plastic and over here as well you have they have used plastic in terms of build quality and design this phone is definitely something which is very impressive it has a very slim thickness which is approximately 4.75 millimeter and we will confirm that once we do the full review we do have some other phones which has been announced before this one in India uh, and again they are coming from some other brands like Geoni so we have the Geoni S 5.1 with us this is 5.1 millimeter and if you compare both of these phones together you can see the difference over here the x5 max is definitely a slimmer device as compared to the geoni s5.1 which is also a very thin phone from geoni or the thinnest from geoni in terms of thickness you can see the comparison over here these two devices are kind of different you do have slight amount of plastic which is emerging on the back side but again even after that plastic if you compare the thickness of these two phones you can see that the x5 max is definitely a thin device as compared to the geoni s5.1 so this is how the thickness comparison goes in between these two in terms of form factor and the build quality definitely this device is higher because they have used metal at the back side which is uh, good as far as the geoni s5.1 is concerned it has glass at the back side on on the front we can see that we have glass on both of these two phones talking about the specification this phone is a pretty good device in terms of hardware specification as well it is going to support 4g in india and both the band fdd lte and td lte both of them will be supported so it has full 4g support in india which will come so it is a 5 megapixel camera which can record high definition video as well we have nice metallic earpiece below the glass we have proximity and embed light sensors over there and at the bottom we can see that we have the capacitive buttons which again do not have backlit led or maybe that is disabled as of now i cannot confirm okay it does have backlit led uh, but again that is disabled yeah. talking about the lock screen this is how the lock screen look like and again this is a very new ui which you will see this is called font touch os 2.0 which is running on top of android and again we will just show you the version of android is still taking a look over the back side we have a 13 megapixel camera at the back which is an autofocus camera you can record high definition video as well it has a secondary microphone for noise cancellation we have an led flash for low light photos and you can also use it as a torch again at the back side at the bottom we can see that we have the loudspeaker over there and we have have slight emerging points over there on both the sides so that if you place the device like this on a flat table the sound will get muffled but it will not get completely blocked so in terms of comparison in terms of hardware specs definitely this device is high in terms of the price but this is offering a much better hardware as compared to the geoni s5.1 which we have with us so that's how the comparison goes again in terms of camera as well you have an 8 megapixel camera which performs pretty okay in average but this device on the other hand has a 13 megapixel camera and it should perform very and we will just show you that so let's continue with the video and here we have the device as you can see on the on the front at the bottom we have the touch capacitor buttons which do not have backlit LED and this is something which I will confirm later on but seems like it has a silver paint but the backlit LEDs are not there over here on the top we have the 5 megapixel camera which is an autofocus camera uh, not an autofocus a fixed focus camera can record high definition video we have the nice metal earpiece over there as well we have proximity and embed light sensors at the rear we have 13 megapixel camera with LED flash we do have a secondary microphone for noise cancellation as well at the bottom we have the loudspeaker and we have these emerging points which are again making sure that the loudspeaker does not get blocked if you place the, place the device like this on a table it has a pretty good display the display is pretty colorful it has pretty good viewing angles as well so you can see the display from almost any angle without any issues this is how the display look like and again it is a pretty big display which we have on this device which does give you a very good multimedia and audio experience you do have an audio processor as well which will give you better quality of sound the only thing which i would say is kind of low on this device is going to be the 2000 milliampere battery but considering the specification which we have on this phone we will have a very thin battery we have a l based chipset on this device and we have the battery over here and again they have designed in such a way that the heat dissipation is good enough and you do not feel the heat uh, especially on this part but the heat will be spread it across on the device in terms of heating Talking about the chipset, we have a 64-bit processor on this device, which is the new thing and it has not launched till now. Talking about the SIM card connectivity, let me just open the SIM card slot 
and here we have the SIM card tray in which you can insert two SIM card or you can insert one SIM card and use the other micro SD memory card. So you can use a micro SD memory card over here in this slot. You can use a micro SIM over here in this slot. And if you want to use two SIM card, then you won't be able to use the micro SD memory card. In that case, you can actually put a nano SIM and the nano SIM can actually go over here. So this is how this part is actually will take the nano SIM. So you can put a nano SIM over here in this part and use the other micro sim over here this is how you can use the dual sim connectivity on the phone as far as other things are concerned we have the ports over here for the power and sleep key and the volume rocker both of the buttons are metal buttons and they give you good amount of feedback we have nice metallic bands as well on the top we have 3.5 audio jack and again one thing which i have noticed on some of the slim phones out there in the market which is again the oppo r5 which we see which we have seen recently that one does not have the 3.5 audio jack so again that compromise is not there on this phone again this will this will cost you pretty good amount of money in India approximately 30,000 rupees you will have to pay for it but for that price you are getting a very good hardware inside which is again better than the Oppo R5 or the Geoni S5.1 talking about some of the things we have uh, compatibility for the video you can play high definition videos you can also record high definition video both from the rear as well as from the front camera have 4k resolution recording uh, possible from the rear camera on this device let's take a look over the ui and one thing which i can say is that even when it is a very slim device it does not feel like a cheap device it is a very good device in terms of the build quality and it is light enough as well in terms of the weight i'm not sure about the exact weight of this device but it so the UI which is running on top of Android is called the Fun Touch OS 2.0 which is a custom UI which is running on top of Android however you do not have application drop but the home screen are kind of responsive and you can also increase the home screen and you can have maximum 9 home screen on this device taking a look over the phone dialer this is how the phone dialer look like you can easily dial a number but you cannot make a video call on this device cellular video calls are not supported taking over the messaging application this is how the messaging application look like on the messaging application itself you can see that we have a QWERTY keyboard this this QWERTY keyboard will allow you to type on this device smoothly without any issues. You can type, uh, you can type with swipe to type is supported on this device and you do get a pop-up of whatever key you are pressing. So you get the suggestions as well so that you can type easily and much faster on this device. You can always type in the landscape mode as well. But in messaging application, you won't be able to do that. Now let's take a look over the notification center. So we have the notification center over here. And if you want to go into settings, let me just show you the settings scenario. So again, this kind of interface which we see on this device is very much similar to what we have seen on iOS. So here we have shortcuts for the music, messages, iMusic and whatever recent application you have opened. You have support for automatic brightness as well. And we can go to the settings directly from here by just tapping over here and we can go into the settings. This is how the setting UI look like as you can see. And let me just show you the settings as far as phone storage is concerned. So in terms of phone storage, this device has internal storage of approximately 16 GB out of which 4.68 GB is the system space where you can actually install applications, store picture videos and other data. As of now, the available amount of storage is 2.55 plus 9.26. So you will have approximately 12 GB of storage available on this device to install applications, store picture videos and other data. You do have support for OTG as well. That means USB OTG storage is supported on this device. Apart from this, if you take a look over the version information as far as software is concerned let me just show you the version information so here we have the one version information and it is running android kitkat 4.4.4 which is again not the latest version but good enough for the device like this and we have 1.5 gigahertz snapdragon 615 octa core cpu which we have on this phone apart from this if we take a look about the other things we do have support for wireless tethering as well and let me just show you the same we do have support for dlna as well location settings are also supported you can use the device for gps navigation as well without any issue and when it comes to some other application scenario this device in terms of RAM is also pretty high you have approximately 2 GB of RAM on this device and let me just show you the current scenario of the RAM so we have all the application which are running in the background again it is not running with high heavy processing and as of now the used amount of RAM is 0.93 GB and the available amount of RAM is 0.94 GB so approximately 1 GB of RAM is something which you will get on this device out of the box and this is again uh, a device which is out of the box there are no application installed on this phone 
from a user so it is completely new you can say in terms of personal hotspot option you do have that supported as well you can create a portable wi-fi hotspot from the 3g sim card you have support for usb tethering as well and bluetooth tethering is also supported you do have different kind of gestures which are supported which includes smart motion gestures which again will help you control the functionality of the phone using the proximity sensor which we have on the front you can draw a c to actually wake up the dialer you can draw an m to actually play music and all that can be done once the phone is in the sleep mode and the screen is turned off again you do have wireless display also supported and all these things does make this phone pretty good in terms of the overall value for money you get a lot of features on this smartphone which is again kind of costly but coming with a good hardware let me just take a photo of the geoni s 5.1 which we have over here and so here we have the camera UI for the rear camera and as you can see this device does have autofocus and tap to focus is also supported. Let me just take a photo of this Geoni S5.1 and it will basically focus and take the photo and the camera shutter is also pretty quick. In terms of camera clarity I can say that the camera is pretty clear in terms of details as well as in terms of color protection. This is a pretty good photo. Talking about some of the low light photos I can take one more photo in low light as of now and show you the same. I am just going to take a photo as of now from this device so again this photo has been taken in again a low light scenario and here we have the photo the photo again looks decent enough again not bad at all it has taken a pretty good photo in terms of clarity as well as in terms of colors from this device from the rear camera and again it can also record high definition video and you can also record 4k resolution video you have all the few uh, camera mode supported which includes HDR mode panorama mode is also supported you have some other modes as well in which you can blur the background by using the bokeh mode and apart from from this we do have the front camera which we can show you now and this is how the front camera UI look like and I can take a photo of myself as of now a front camera selfie and I can show you the same so I've just taken a photo again the front camera is a fixed focus camera it is not an autofocus camera but it can also record high definition video the kind of clarity it has given in this particular photo which we have taken in again in low light scenario is pretty good and the colors are being also nicely reproduced I would say the front camera performance is decent and actually better than some the other flagship phones which I have seen recently so in terms of the UI and the overall response from the UI the phone is not lagging at all the overall UI is responsive definitely it is inspired from iOS to an extent but it does have some extra features which is again kind of different you do not have application drawer on the phone but again that should not be a problem because once you start using it you can actually get used to the home screen which will have all the application which you install on this phone and again later on you can configure as per which application you would like to have in the folder so that you can hide them so in, in all I can say that this is a pretty affordable not an affordable device but a pretty good hardware device for the price the price which they have set for it is again going to be high for which it is going to be available but considering that price point they have given a very good hardware a very good build quality a very nice camera at the back which can record high definition video as well as 4k resolution video and the front camera can also take very good selfies so do let us know if you have any specific question for this device we would love to help you you can like this video this video helped you by clicking the like button below you can subscribe to our youtube video channel for more videos like this by clicking the subscribe button below thanks for watching this video this is vivo x5 max hands-on review for you this is abhishek signing off thank you